In 1905, Pensacola, Florida had a population of under 30,000. Pensacola High School graduated its first class of only two students. The last epidemic of yellow fever was halted by isolating victims and draining nearby swamps. The first national bank was located inside the Pensacola Opera House. Geronimo, leader of the Apache Nation who had been imprisoned at Fort Pickens, died at the age of 80 and the San Carlos Hotel was completed at a cost of $500,000, becoming the Grand Dam of Palafox Street. At this time, there were only three Catholic churches in Pensacola, St. Michael's, St. Joseph's, and St. John's near the Naval Air Station. When Bishop Allen of the Diocese of Mobile responded to the growing demand from people in East Pensacola for their own parish, Bishop Allen carefully considered their request. He wanted more than another brick and mortar building. He wanted a parish that represented something more. It had only been a few years since on June 11, 1899, Pope Leo XIII solemnly consecrated all humankind to the care of the Sacred Heart of Jesus. Thus, the construction of the first Sacred Heart Church was begun on the corner of Jackson Street and 9th Avenue. The walls of the church were barely finished when a Category 4 hurricane devastated the unfinished church and much of Pensacola. The new church was dedicated in 1907 by Bishop Allen to the joy and acclamation of the East Hill community who were committed to being examples of Jesus' love, His Sacred Heart. For the growing community of Sacred Heart, the next priority was a school for their sons and daughters. The earliest school for boys and girls already existed as of 1906. But this beautiful new school building was completed in 1911. Even today, people comment on why that amazing building is no longer standing. It was indeed beautiful to behold, but even by early 20th century standards, it was a fire trap with major structural defects. The staircases literally seemed to move or shift. The building, so beautiful on the outside, had to be taken down, but the education of Sacred Heart students would continue. Oh, well, when we first went to school down now, we went to 9th Avenue and LaRue, a big three-story wooden house. And then after a year or so, we moved over to the convent, which was over the two buildings over. The middle, the building next door to where we were was the rectory. And then we moved into the convent. And uh, the first grade, the lower grades, was down on the bottom floor. The United States entered World War I in 1917, and it had a direct effect on Pensacola, still the only naval air station. This trying time helped strengthen the families of Sacred Heart Parish. In the 1920s, Sacred Heart Parish continued to grow in its mission of witnessing to Jesus' Sacred Heart in Pensacola. With 219 families in the directory, there were many witnesses of Catholic life in East Hill. Us were altar boys, and some of us did other kinds of work over in the church. And I was an organ player. That's what everybody used to say, he's an organ player. But I didn't play the organ. My mother played the organ, but I pumped it. And she would always say, we're going to church and you can play the organ. That meant I had to pump it while she played it. The 1920s brought continued growth to this faith-filled community. In 1927, Bishop Thomas J. Tulum became the sixth bishop of Mobile and guided the church in Alabama and Northwest Florida for more than 40 years. Bishop was Bishop Tulum. Mm -hmm. Now he was an imposing figure. Yes, he was. Like 300 pounds. Mm -hmm. uh, and I remember we had confirmation one time. Oh, that's scary. And he asked everybody questions. I said, if he comes up to me, I'm going to faint. <laughs> <laughs> he, he skipped me with somebody else. Probably Betty Ann. I, I don't know. I was, I, just, I, I was praying he wouldn't stop me. Be a the Great Depression of 1929 was an economic slump that greatly affected Pensacola. One by one, docks rotted away, mills closed, and the once thriving port of Pensacola became a shadow. By the 1930s, Pensacola was certainly moving forward with the opening of the Santa Rosa Sound Bridge and the Pensacola Bay Bridge. Casino Beach opened and could now be reached by car. During World War II, Pensacola's economy grew primarily as a result of the increased activity at the Pensacola Naval Air Station. Sacred Heart Parish also grew. I was baptized here in the old church, the church down on 9th Avenue that uh, was built in 1907. 
and uh, I was married in the church, uh, which is now the school building, which was uh, built in the 50s. I was married in that church and buried my mother from that church. In the fall of 1946, the Sisters of St. Dominic took over Sacred Heart School. By 1947, roof leakage had become an urgent problem in the church. After careful consideration, it was determined that a combined school and church would be the best solution, and it would be built on the new property at 12th Avenue and Mallory Street. It was in the uh, third grade that we walked all the way up to where the new Sacred Heart School is for the dedication, the groundbreaking. And that was a big event for us to get out of school and make that walk that day up there. I remember it being really cold, <laughs> and I was feeling sorry for the children. It was so cold. Under the direction of Father Daly, groundbreaking for the new church and school complex took place in 1951 on the corner of 12th Avenue and Mallory Street. The complex opened in October 1952. at the <laughs> cathedral school because uh, in those days we went to mass every day and uh, of course you fasted from midnight and um, we get to go to the cafeteria every day after mass but the uh, ladies in the kitchen cooked um, cinnamon rolls we had cinnamon rolls and hot chocolate and all that kind of stuff I remember that Father Daly continued to raise money for a permanent church and at the time of his death in 1964 had raised $250,000 I grew up in this school, and the gym was the church at the time. Our present-day gym was the church. Uh, Monsignor Michael Daly was the pastor, and Father John Bender was the um, his assistant, and did a lot of the footwork. He was a young priest from Maryland and was, had a lot of energy. On May 18, 1967, Archbishop Tulin dedicated the new Sacred Heart Church with the assistance of Pastor Leo Burns, it was located on the corner of 12th Avenue and Mallory Street. I've been in this parish all my life, off and on. You know, every time I got to Pensacola, I was in Sacred Heart Parish. My, my parents and everybody else went here. So, it's great. Yes, it is. The history of Sacred Heart Parish has always included a rich family fellowship, whether participating in a community parade or celebrating a school performance. Sacred Heart Parish was family to me. It's um, so many times when we have been in need of prayer, there have been so many people who have stepped up and helped us with prayer, and then we hope that we can do the same for others. Sacred Heart Parish is a community of faith, and we thank God for the pastors with whom we have been blessed. Under the direction of Monsignor Reed, the new parish hall and offices were completed in 2003. Between the joy and the trauma of life, I have a, a lot of it has happened in, within this community, so I have a definite connection. I still see parents of children that I went to school with who are now adults. I see them during the holidays when they come home to Pensacola. I've met their spouses and their children. It's just wonderful, wonderful connection. As a member of the Diocese of Pensacola, Tallahassee, Sacred Heart Parish continues to grow, seeking God's will for the future. I've been in many, many parishes. I think it's the friendliest place I've ever 